In this episode of the Thornapple River Rail series, we're heading back up to Michigan's Upper Peninsula, perhaps better known as the UP. After a long summer away, our fall season kicks off with a great batch of trains throughout the central UP with Canadian National and the Lake Superior and Ishpeming on tap. From the Marquette Iron Range to Escanaba, the UP does not disappoint on this day, so let's get started. Our day begins along the Ellison I ore sub outside Nagani, which is the conduit for iron ore heading to market from the Tilden mine. Within a half hour, our first train rumbled near, with the unmistakable chugging of the Ellison I's last two U-boats, U-30C's numbers 3000 and 3009, leading the 7 Tilden job. Here at Eagle Mills Junction, they make the right turns through the rock cut en route to Eagle Mills. Over the next hour, CN Local L549 worked the iron range, setting out cars for points west and picking up a half dozen cars from the Ellis and I at Queens. With a very respectable 52 cars in tow, we caught them heading south at Little Lake, just a few minutes out of the iron range. Electing to continue the chase to Escanaba, we catch them next in the McFarland defect detector, which confirms they're doing all of the allotted track speed of 40 miles an hour.
EM detector, mile 146.8. South found, no defects. Temperature 61F. Total axles 220. Speed 40. Detector out. At Brampton, they pass the other defect detector on the line as they roll through the banked curve which sets up their approach into Escanaba. Here we get a close-up look, placing the camera right on the shoulder of the road. Our last look at L549 is here in downtown Escanaba, where they are actually heading west. Soon they'll pass through Algoma Junction, heading back north and eventually landing in the yard at Gladstone. At this location, however, is where they cross the one and only diamond remaining in the entire Upper Peninsula, crossing the rails of the Escanaba and Lake Superior Railroad. Our L549 would have to wait at Algoma Junction for the L552 to clear up the track from Gladstone, so we headed west towards Hyde, where we catch what is otherwise known as the Quinnisec Turn heading west along US 2.
a bit farther to the west, we catch up with them again. Today's 42 car train includes the usual assortment of boxcars, tanks, and especially pulp wood, all bound for the Verso paper mill in Quinnisset. As the shadows began to lengthen in the afternoon sun, it was time to get back to the Marquette Range subdivision to chase the U-745 all-rail ore train back to the Iron Range and the LSNI. Making great time south of Brampton, their traffic includes 45 empty hoppers for loading of iron ore at the Tilden Mine. Also bound for the mine at the head end of today's train are three covered hoppers loaded with bentonite clay, which is used as a binder in the iron ore pellet formation process. At McFarland, we put the drone up in the air for an elevated view of the M35 crossing, easily the busiest crossing on this segment of railroad.
and K.I. Sawyer, both the engineer and conductor, are having fun too, with hands out the window and a long-held horn blast as they pass under the bridge. We're now back on the Ellis and I at Eagle Mills West, where we're waiting for the U-745, but first, the three-yard hill has to bring in 60 more iron ore jennies loaded with pellets from the Tilden mine. Meanwhile, the U-745 held at Partridge before they were given permission up this way and into the yard to drop off their cars. Back in the sky, the evening light casts ever longer shadows as they once again cross over M-35. A little ways beyond the road are the western switches at Eagle Mills, which requires a brief pause to line themselves into the correct track. This yard and maintenance facilities are the central hub of the Ellis and I, with the original Cleveland Cliffs pelletizing plant off to the right, or what remains of it at least. Tomorrow morning, the Ellis and I will call a seven waiter crew to take these hoppers down to the mine for loading and ultimately drop the train off at Partridge. So now the U-745 will move light power back to Partridge to pick up the work the seven waiter did today.
With their air brake set and release completed on 45 loaded ore hoppers, the U745 crew now only has to return to Gladstone, where their consist will be forwarded tomorrow as part of L551 to Sault Ste. Marie with the ore destined for the SR Steel facility on the Canadian side of the border. As they head out, it's easy to see how so many people have become enamored with the UP with great rural scenes like this one. Thanks for watching this edition of the Thorn Apple River Rail Series. Your viewership is appreciated, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave your thoughts and questions in the comments below.